I don't suppose at the time I realised, you know, when yeah. I think I was so young, you know, I'd met Terry when I was 15, we were courting from 17 and engaged when I was 17, married at 20, pregnant within a year or so. Mm -hmm. So everything sort of happened so quickly that I think I just sort of took it for granted that yeah. that was how life was. I didn't really have anything to compare to that was different. We were much more of a family than I think football is now. We didn't often have transfers. If we did, it was kind of big suspicion about who this new person was that was coming <laughs> into the team. He was in Diggs next door to the leader of the youth club I went to when I was 15. And he brought Terry and a couple of other young players up and said, I want you to look after these guys that have come to live next door to me in Diggs. And, um, you know, we just got to know each other like that. My mum had the cafe for 27 years opposite the football ground. So she was given a contract by Don Revy to feed all the younger players. The first team went in anyway because there was nowhere else to go. There was no catering at the ground. So my mum did all the meals and she was letting me go in the flat at the back where my grandparents lived so that the first team players didn't get bothered. It just became, in fact, there were, every time there was a draw on the radio for a cup, you know, who you're going to play next, they, the Times television cameras had been in my grandma's flat. Yeah, photographing the, you know, it's sort of like, um, Billy Bremner and Jack Chart and everybody around the radio listening to who they'd got and then the big roar or disappointment according to who the draw was. The players were away a lot, you know, if they had, they were in Europe most years, so Revy would take them away for a Wednesday game, he'd take them away on a Monday. Yeah. So bear in mind, they could have been away Friday night for a Saturday game, yeah. come home Saturday, it was more like Norwich or Ipswich, they'd get home like midnight on a Saturday night because travelling was so bad. So you'd have them at home on the Sunday and then they'd be off again on the Monday for a European game. So go on the Monday, come back Thursday, then the cycle starts again, um, mm. you know, with the match on a Friday. At one point, we all had so many babies between us that even Friday nights they didn't stay at home, they'd go stay in a hotel in Leeds so that they got the sleep and didn't have to wake up with babies. Oh. It made the girls be quite close, you know, we yeah. lived quite close together. Most of us lived around sort of Bardsley, Scarcroft, Collingham, that area, or quite a lot of us did. And, you know, we, there were like two, three, four children. Eddie and Linda Gray made it to six, you know, so <laughs> a lot of children. When I mean, we used to go and sometimes hire the swimming pool at Woodhall uh, when it was convent. And between us, you know, four wives and our kids would fill the pool, you know, so we'd just hire it for a few hours and um, just have, just, we were close, you know, we all had the same things to cope with, if you like, and the same interests. And, you know, we'd all turn up glammed up on a Saturday for matches and, do's and things. We never paid to get in anywhere and we never queued. Um, and that took a bit of adjusting until when I got older. You know, <laughs> <laughs>